We do not deserve the least of your mercies. So thank you for extending your grace and your mercy to us. Please accept our thanks in the name of Jesus. We ask that as we share your word this morning, you will bless us and do us good. Thank you, Father. In the name of Jesus, we have prayed. Everybody will shout it again. Amen. 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 Privilege and honor to be here this morning and thank you for the first time. We precious people of God. Also, thank God for Pastor Tutu, Pastor Lincoln. Thank you for having me. I appreciate this and I do not take it for granted. It's my first time here, like he said. Like he said and um, it's a record that you brought me. I've been to Japanese week, you know, Switzerland and all that. Sweden. First time. It's such a lovely place. I thank God. I want to thank God for my husband that has allowed me to do what I'm doing. He's secure enough to let me give expression to the grace of God on my life. Not every husband will allow you to shine. Not every husband will allow you to fulfill destiny. So I always say that when I get to heaven, I'm going to bow before the Lord Jesus and use the hair on my head to wipe his feet for the privilege of being his Sunday June. My husband will be 16 in June and he looks 16. <laughs> We're planning a big party for him, for he truly deserves it. Please celebrate my husband faithfully. September 8th, our marriage will be 30 years Amen. old. And God has been very, very, very good all to us. I give it all to God. In the name of Jesus. God has blessed our marriage with four biological children, some adopted children. We're in a Christian orphanage in Nigeria. We have 27 children. Very well. Some of them were brought. I remember there was a time when the government invited me to come and pick a child in the stream. By the time I got there, we couldn't even identify whether he's a boy or a girl, or he was a boy or a girl, because pigs had eaten him up. So it's amazing when God gives you the privilege to take care of these children and watch them go to school and call you mommy. The next time I just cry. I told God I want to present a minimum of 100 children to the Lord Jesus as his wedding gift when we get to heaven. And I thank him because now I have 27. And uh, getting better and better. I give God all the praise. Um, about five weeks ago, I became a grandmother. Wow. Yeah. God bless my husband and me um, with um, a grandson, Tobin. He will be I am. Tobin means in Hebrew, God is great. He's really great. He is. And I thank him for the privilege to be here again. God's servant, Pastor has you know, asked me to share with you on the marriage relationship. And I've been speaking in the confines of the time that I have on marriage is for destiny. A lot of people get married for different reasons. But at the back of our minds, we must understand that the God that gave marriage the institution of marriage as a gift to humanity has destiny at the back of his mind marriage is many things to many people some people see marriage number one as a necessary evil it's necessary it's evil but mm, let's do it let's do it number two some people see marriage as a mere social contract to be run and guided by traditions and superstitious beliefs it's a social contract so let's 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 do it because everybody does it number three some people see marriage as an organized forum for child bearing and child rearing a lot of women today have been turned to you know 
child or baby manufacturing companies. They just give birth and give birth because the man wants a place where he can raise his children, you know, bless the kids, you know, do this and that. That's how some people see marriage. A lot of people see marriage. For instance, in Africa, marriage is like a formalized slave trade. The woman is like a glorified slave. You can kick her out and get another one at will. And you are even free to marry as many as possible in Nigeria. For instance, in Africa, there are people that have 19 wives, 27 wives. To even cope with a, a wife, you know what it takes. Not talk of 19 wives, 20 wives. In those days, you know, our forefathers, the number of wives they had determined how blessed, how honorable, how rich they were. And you see them put a lot of stuff on the heads of these women and lead them to the farm. And when they, are rich, when they get to the farm, the, the ladies, the women will work as much as, you know, the men. And while they are returning, the women will carry stuffs on their heads, heavy loads. Sometimes they are pregnant. They are, you know, feeling so uncomfortable. They remove their dresses. And you see the man strolling behind them or in the front with one useless cutlass. You know, driving away imaginary flies. And greeting people that do not require his greetings. Because he's the king in that kingdom. Because he's, he's the lion of the tribe of his family. He's everything. And when they get home, you see the man sit before a transistor radio. Listening to music with a keg of palm wine. While the woman goes to the kitchen to work. Because in, in Africa, marriage is like, you know, um, like a formal slave trade. The woman is just like a glorified slave. And sometimes I've discovered in my 51 years on earth, I've discovered that a lot of men, even though they are born again, they need deliverance. That's the truth. The way they treat their wives, particularly African men. The way they treat their wives, their body languages. The way they, they handle the, the ladies, the way they shout at them, can't you see, are you, are you deaf, are you dumb, you goat, you pig, forgetting that it takes a goat to be married to a goat. So if you call your wife a goat, you're just saying, I'm Mr. Goat. A lot of men, they are born again, but they are not conscious of this thing that we're talking about. Because that's the way their fathers treated their, their mothers. Some of us have never seen our, our fathers say, I love you to our mothers. We've never seen them kiss. In the Western world, it may look normal, but it's not normal in Africa. The man is the boss. He's a big boss. Everybody bows to him. Even the way he walks. You know, when your father is coming, you switch off the TV. Who are you? He's coming, he's coming, everybody. Welcome, daddy. Welcome. Yes, what have you been doing? When you want to say yes, you say no. Sorry, sorry daddy. Yeah, no, it's, it's no, sir. You know, that's the figure that fathers caught in Africa. But things are changing because we're the generation that is redefining parenting. Things are changing. We're working with the Lord and with a lot of teachings, we understand that it doesn't have to be that. No, it doesn't. So in Africa, marriage is, is, is like is a formalized slave trade. In the Western world, it's not even better. Marriage is like a business. For better, for stay. You know, for worse, for leave. Don't be deceived by what you watch on TV. And you see them present the bouquets and the roses and, you know, and all that. No, they, pull, they can pull out the gun any time to kill anybody. You know, the wives, they can do anything. They can kick out anybody. So if marriage is not all that I have mentioned, what then is marriage? What is marriage? I must say... In this introduction that marriage is not the culture of any country it's a gift of god marriage is neither western nor african marriage is the you know is the gift of god in the book of genesis chapter number 2 and verse 18 genesis chapter 2 verse 18 the bible says and the lord said it is not good that the man should be alone. I will make for him a help that is meet. I will make for him a helper that is suitable. I will make for him a destiny helper. 
So marriage is for destiny. It is the gift of God. Number two, what is marriage? It is a covenant relationship between a man and a woman. Can I say this again? It is a covenant relationship. Marriage is more than a contract. A contract can end. A covenant relationship between a mature man and a mature woman. I didn't say between a man and a man. Because the Bible does not say it. And it's not between a woman and a woman. We're talking the Bible. We're Christians. It doesn't matter how the standards are lowered. Jesus must still meet some remnants on earth. Is is a covenant relationship between a mature man and a mature woman through which they both it's mutual through which they both seek to give and to receive. It's not a one way traffic. I'm the husband, you must worship on my altar. No, I'm the wife, and because I earn more than you, you must be subservient to me. No. Is mutual through which they both seek to give and receive satisfaction and fulfillment of their healthy needs. Healthy needs. I chose my words. Healthy needs, desires, and expectations. That's marriage. That's the biblical definition of marriage. Number three, marriage is a mystery. It's a mystery. In the book of Proverbs, chapter 30, verses 18 and 19. Proverbs 30. 18 and 19. The Bible says there be three things which are too wonderful for me. Yea, four which I know not. The way of an eagle in the air. The way of a serpent upon a rock. The way of a sheep in the midst of the sea. And the way of a man with a maid. They are mysteries. These are mysteries. Marriage is a mystery. I met my husband 34 years ago. He was a brother in church. I had my circle of friends. He had his own. We were strangers. And then 32 years ago, he, he walked up to me and wanted me to marry him. And then 30 years down the line, I've quote and unquote abandoned everybody just to stick with him. Stick to him and bear his name. My father sent me to school, trained me, I graduated, paid the fees. And now I drop that man's name and I'm bearing a stranger's name. Is that not a mystery? Marriage is a mystery. And then you give your body to the man. The man sleeps with you. You share things together. Pillow talk. Things you don't want any other human being on earth to know. You just trust this stranger. Suddenly, there's something on your inside that pulls you to him. It's a mystery. That's what the book of Ephesians chapter 5 tells us. It is a mystery. Just like the relationship between us and God. Just like the relationship between you and Christ. When you get saved, it's amazing. You used to smoke and then suddenly it stops. The part that raised Jesus from the dead comes into you. You can't explain the mystery of salvation. You used to be a prostitute and now you hate sin. You wake up in the morning and you want to please the Lord. You want to serve him. You don't want to go to, you know, don't want to go clubbing again. You can't, it's a mystery. There are things that are mysteries and marriage is one of them. It's a mystery that cannot be explained. And that is why the devil fights it. Fights it because the devil knows that if a man and his wife agree, any good thing can happen. So the devil does everything within his power to make sure that he afflicts marriage. He perverts it. He makes us see so much of negative things about marriage that we're we're thinking, is it worth it? It's worth it. Marriage is sweet depending on the cutlery you used to eat it. I may prove that marriage is sweet. I've been married 30 years and it's getting stronger and stronger. I don't have a perfect marriage but I have a great one. I have a great one. My husband is not an angel. Neither am I. But both of us are enjoying God and enjoying ourselves. I was jokingly telling my sister Faith yesterday. I said, look, when I'm not at home, my husband and I speak about 25 times a day. Hello, darling. I'm going to the bathroom, so don't call me. Okay, darling. Okay, darling. I'm, you know, okay, darling. 30 years. And it's getting better. And getting better. I didn't want to be married as a single person, as an unbeliever, before I got born again, because I didn't like what I was seeing. And after I got born again, I wasn't even impressed. Even my pastor's home was a mess. 
So I said to myself, no, I will ne- if this is what marriage is all about, no, I will just stay single and serve the Lord. And then God began to deal with my heart. And when I got convinced, I said to the Lord, Father, if you ever give me the privilege of being married, I will make a difference. My marriage will inspire people. And God has been very, very faithful. Headache is peculiar to the career. So that someone is not enjoying the marriage does not mean that you won't enjoy your own. The difference is knowledge. Marriage is sweet. Very sweet. There will be challenges. That's true. The devil will wage wars. A minimum of 14 winds will blow against your marriage. But just make up your mind that God will be honored. It doesn't matter what the devil feels about it. This marriage will succeed. And when Jesus comes, he will put a star on my crown because of this. And can I just pause to say this? Those of you that are parents, listen to me very carefully. If you want to know the kind of marriages your children will have, look at your own very well. Because you are their perfect example. So for the sake of those children, work on your marriage. It's always greener on the other side of the fence. Oh, I wish I was Mrs. Jones. Oh, I wish. I wish. When you get there, you will see what Mrs. Jones is also facing. So work on your marriage. It's the best school you will ever get to. Now, that is the only school where you don't graduate. Marriage is the only school where you are presented with your certificate on your matriculation day. Every other school, you, you, you go to school, you go through the course, and then you, you, you graduate. But marriage, no. On the day you are you know, matriculating, a certificate is given to you. And I always tell, when I'm privileged to join people or to minister at wedding ceremonies, I say to them, even though they say this is a marriage certificate, it is actually your letter of employment. So, welcome to hard work. Because marriage is hard work. No good marriage is picked on the street. Marriage is hard work. And you've got to get ready to work. Marriage is for destiny. The Bible says in the book of Ephesians 31, Ephesians chapter 5 and verse number 31, Ephesians 5, 31, For this cause shall a man leave his father and mother and shall be joined unto his wife, and they too shall be one flesh. Verse 32, This is a great mystery. That's what the Bible calls it. But I speak concerning Christ and the church. Verse 33, Nevertheless, let every one of you in particular so love his wife, even as himself, and the wife see that she reverence her husband. There are so many wrong reasons for marriage. I don't want to go into that today because um, I can see that my audience does not consist of too many young people that are, you know, uh, looking unto God for getting married. A lot of wrong reasons. But I want to go to the marriage issue. You know, um, itself. Praise the Lord. Marriage is the relationship between two forgivers. So if you're not ready to be a forgiver, don't even bother to go into marriage. Please. Because in marriage, you are vulnerable. Your spouse will see what nobody sees. Every marriage, whether it will break or it will stay, goes through seven stages. Seven. Maybe I just run through. The first stage, whether the marriage will break or it will stay. So let's look at if a marriage is going to break. No marriage breaks overnight. Every marriage goes through seven stages. The first stage is what I call honeymoon stage. Honeymoon. I love you. Yes, I love you. We've been declared husband and wife. Oh, you are the only sugar in my tea. You are the only rose in my garden. You are the only tomato in my jollof rice. You are everything. You are my dream come true. You know, all sorts. Every marriage goes through it. But you know, beloved, that honeymoon can last forever depending on how you manage your marriage. It can last forever. At least something attracted you to that person. And if you... Because a lot of couples, after they get married, they just relax. They just let down the guards. Mm. 
I have what I want now. The ring is on my hand. That's okay. Nobody can take him again. And the man says, yes, I hunted and I caught the big fish. I'm fine now. Yes. Now, let's face serious business or other businesses. You must continually maintain your marriage if your honeymoon will last. Those little, little, tiny, tiny things you were doing because husbands and wives, listen to me. A woman is different from a man in seven ways minimum. We're different from you. I'll pause and I'll, uh, and I'll tell you ways in which we are different. But I don't want you to mess up your notes. So maybe I should finish this. Remind me. I need to let you know we're different. At, at least two or three that I'll share with you. We're different. By every standard, your wife is different from you. You're not superior to her. She's not superior to you. We're just different. That's why we don't compete. We complement. And once you understand this, you will have peace in your marriage. A lot of men don't know how to treat their wives. So they get into a lot of troubles. And beloved, don't forget, after every wedding comes a marriage. After every wedding comes a marriage. So it's not enough to wed. It's important that you maintain the marriage. So let me run through the seven stages. If a marriage is going to break, honeymoon stage. I love you, I love you, I love you. And every marriage goes through that. The second stage is the normal life stage. Normal. Every marriage goes through it. After the honeymoon stage, after the wedding, you are now together. So your husband snores when he sleeps. <sighs> normal life stage. Reality. So my wife can be this dirty with all the makeup. She can just refuse to wash her undies for three days. Oh my God. So my husband can just throw his shoes so his socks can be this dirty. But I thought, my goodness, when, when, when this man used to visit, he, he always looked as if he was stepping out of a magazine. Ah, ah. What, 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 what's happening here? It's reality stage. Look, I can't be presenting again. When she removes her wig, and you see what? <laughs> when you know, she said, "Look, I can't be speaking and be pretending when I'm in church." Bless you, bless you. We thank God for you. When I'm home, let me be. Let me just be. That's why you must marry your friend. Who is a friend? Someone that knows where you stink and yet is faithful. Don't marry just for marriage's sake. Better stay single than marry the wrong person. Because there is no other relationship where your Christianity will be tried and tested than marriage. Excuse me. Your patience will be tried. Your, from patience, you will change the gear to long suffering. From long suffering, you will move to endurance. And you come back to patience again. Marriage. It's hard work. Marry your friend. Someone that knows where you think. And yet is faithful. Normal life stage. If that marriage is going to break, it moves from normal life stage to criticism stage. Criticism. If I knew you were like this, I wouldn't have married you. Why are you like this? Are you like your father? Criticism. You criticize everything. Everything. P -p what, what is this? Too much salt. Mm -hmm. Oh my God, you want to kill me? Too much pepper. It's too hot. Now let me tell you something. When you have too much salt in your meal prepared by your wife, there is a way you tell her. You take the first bite and it's really salty. Is it? <laughs> Honey, I think you just opened that bag of salt. <laughs> in the store and there's no need to fight all she needs to do is take the food back whether it is stew whether it is rice whether it is anything take it back to the kitchen slice some yam or potato put a little water few minutes the salt will be gone and bring it back she don't need to quarrel over that. She was trying to please you. That was why she put too much salt. I want it to be sweet. Will my husband enjoy it? 
in her bid to please you, she overdid it. So that doesn't, because some homes have been broken and destroyed just because of that. Toothpaste. Why did you press it from the middle? Why did you press it from the <laughs> bottom? Are you talking to me like that? You are a demon. I mean you. Before you know it, you know. He loved because the devil is not happy. John chapter 10, verse number 10. John 10, 10. The, the enemy, the thief. He's roaming, he's looking, he's, he, he comes to steal, to kill, and to destroy, including your marriage. So you don't have to fight and quarrel over that. You don't have to. Criticism. There's a way you correct, and it won't look like you are criticizing. No, it won't. Your, your husband is singing off key. You don't need to say, stop, stop, stop. You're speaking like a frog. What is all that? Stop. God didn't complain. <laughs> all you need to do is increase your own volume. Hallelujah. You say you are shouting. I'm just enjoying God. You know? <laughs> you know? So that if that's, or you use time to walk away as if you are prayer walking. If it's disturbing you or something, you don't need. The devil wants you to quarrel over every little thing. Criticism stage. If the marriage will break, it goes through that. And if it's not well managed, if it's not properly managed, it can lead to the fourth stage, which is fighting stage. From criticism stage, you move to fighting stage. Does it not surprise you when you see couples beat themselves up? I thought you were kissing the other time. I thought you were saying I love you. I thought you brought roses. What, what, what went wrong? Fighting, butter, domestic violence is terrible these days. Butter everywhere, you know, and you're wondering what happened. It's because the third stage was not properly managed, so it's 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 you know escalated to the fourth stage. From fighting stage, you move to the fifth one, which is avoidance stage. If it's not properly managed, you see, avoidance stage. That is when you use one word answer. Hi, hi. Where is the sugar table? Mm, mm. A couple was quarreling, you know, they had a misunderstanding. And um, they were not speaking. And the man needed to attend an interview. So, you know what he did? He knew he was going to sleep. He now wrote a note Please wake me up at 6 30. Put it on the bedside. When it was 6.30, he was still snoring. The lady wrote a note, wake up. <laughs> Put it there. The man woke up around 9 or something, saw the note. Oh, he missed the interview. So, what, what? you wrote. I also wrote. So, you know, you don't need to keep malice. There are husbands that should be the wives. You will see them when there is a, a misunderstanding. They'll be singing proverbial songs. The devil in this house must go. I just know my redeemer Lee. That's the man. And you're wondering who is the wife for God's sake? You know? It's 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 so shameful. It's so shameful. Ah, ah. Avoidance. One word answer. Mm, 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 mm. God dwells where there is joy. God dwells where there is peace. God dwells where there is praise. The devil and his demons feast where there is commotion and fighting and misunderstandings. You must make sure that the atmosphere of your home is conducive to the presence of the Holy Spirit every time. From the avoidance stage, you move to separation stage. Separation. A lot of couples have separate bedrooms. That's not right. It's very, it's very wrong. It's not right. Yeah, because my wife is nursing a baby. You made the baby together. So you should do sleepless nights together. Yes, you should. Why separate your rooms? You can have the baby's room, you know, where you, she nurses the baby and all that. But you must sleep together as a couple. It's not right. And from the separation stage, you move to the last stage, which is divorce. It's the last stage. No marriage ends overnight. It goes through different stages and it can be salvaged. It can be.
praise the Lord. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Your wife is different from you in various ways. I'll mention about two or three. Your husband is different from you. One way that we are different from men is in our brains. Brain. We don't think alike. Men and women don't think the same way. And it is a scientific fact. When a woman gets pregnant, if that baby is a boy, in the 29th week, if there's a medical personnel here, you can bear me witness. In the 29th week of that pregnancy, something happens to that boy's brain if he's going to be a boy. The right hemisphere is wiped off. If it's a girl, nothing happens. And the right hemisphere is what controls our emotions. You know, you cry, you show love, you are affectionate and all that. That is why it is easier for women to love. It's more difficult. Sad the scriptures. God commands the man, love your wife. Woman, submit. It's easier for a woman to love. To submit is a problem. But for man, a man can lust. He can say, you are the only sugar in my tea. He has five other cubes. <laughs> one in Southampton, one in London, one in Canada, one in, you know, say you are the only one. A man can sweet talk. But to love genuinely the way Christ loves, a man has to be godly. A man has something. He must have visited Calvary. Something must have happened to his heart. Because it's not easy to manage a woman. I'm a woman. I know what I'm talking about. So, beloved, the way we think is different. Men think deep, but slow. They think slowly. Compared with women, men are slow thinkers, but they are deeper thinkers. Men are slow thinkers, but they are deeper thinkers. A woman thinks faster. Because she operates with the two hemispheres, the right and the left. I'll explain this to you practically so you understand what I'm trying to say. Tomorrow, or even when you get back home tonight, leave your three kids with your husband. Your baby, your toddler, and then your whatever. Tell your husband, I'll be away for just two hours. I'll be back. Let me just get some groceries. And as soon as you leave, your baby wakes up. Your toddler poops. The telephone rings. The, the, the rice on the cooker is burning and then the doorbell rings. The first thing the man is likely going to do is go to the window side to see if you're already coming back. Because he's confused. He doesn't know what next to do. But that is what a woman manages every day. She knows she can still carry the baby and wait for the one that is still you, say, you will see you, you are not done yet and pick the phone and, and do like this. And if she cannot get anything, she can use her dress to, to you know switch off the cooker and turn change, you know, just pull the pot to the other side and scream, Hello, who is there? I'll be with you shortly. She manages it well. So who tells me that a woman is a weaker vessel? When we get to heaven, I'm going to ask Paul. Or was it Peter that said it? You know, a man is wondering, how can I manage, put everything together? Because he's, you know, a woman will say, I don't like what so so and so did. Let's go and confront. The man is thinking, if I confront, it can destroy the relationship. The man is saying, I don't like it. You are too slow. You are too slow. Is it because he's your cousin? That's why you don't want to, to, to fight. The man say, eh, hmm. he that does not fight now, is waiting so that he can be alive to fight some other time. <laughs> you know? Mm. No, and all that. A woman doesn't matter. Let's scatter everything. Huh? You, you, you don't love me. I know you don't love me. If you love me, you will have, you will have spoken. The man is thinking. He's thinking. Once I say it, it cannot be gathered. 
the woman said, I don't care. Let it not be gathered. Let it not be gathered. Let it be spoiled. We won't greet. We will meet in heaven. We're different. Do what we think. The woman is thinking, what shall we wear at Christmas? Myself and the children. The man is thinking, I'm 45. I need a house. So what are you thinking? The woman says, I need a blue dress. But you have a blue dress. It's, it's royal blue I have. I want <laughs> navy blue. We think differently. The woman says, um, darling, you were at the wedding last day. Do you remember what I wore? Said, Since July? And I said, yes, I think it was that my green. Because I saw Mrs. Um, oh, no, I saw Pastor Nikkei there. I think it was, and she greeted me. The man, the man can put on the same suit 17 times a year. But not a woman. What difference? And it's not because she's evil. It's not because she's, you know, she's a spendthrift. Not at all. It's the way we're made. Psychologists have discovered that Couples, 94% of couples are opposites. Even the remaining 6% are not exactly the same. We're different. Opposites attract. So you just have to understand that it's because we're different. Number two, we're different in our temperaments. We're different. You know the four temperaments and all that. I won't go into that. Number three, we're different in our physical strength physically a man may be as short as a bottle <laughs> don't dare him don't dare him when your, when your mouth is running as a woman if the man slaps it you will stagger Say, but so my husband has so much power he's a man we're different a man of God visited our house some time ago and, you know, about six of us, when he was leaving, we were going to pray together. So, he held my hand. I, I happened to be standing beside him. You know, this hand, because I had rings there. Bless you, sir. Please come. You know, so, we were praying. He, he, he was the one, somebody was praying, and he was squeezing the hand. <laughs> and he would say, yes, Lord! Ah, ah. I felt like saying, Jesus, amen. Amen. <laughs> <laughs> The rings were well. my hand was hot in, and he's a respected man of God. I was saying, say, Yes, Jehovah. <laughs> Instead of saying amen, I'll say, Father, let this prayer end. Let this prayer session end. Fast, fast. That's a man. They are strong. That's why your little boy and your big girl, that little boy can beat her. And she will cry. It's the way we are made. Thank you, sir. So, as a man, that's why you are the father. If you want to say, because of everything your wife says, because of every mistake she makes, you will, you will respond. You will kill her. You just kill her. That's why you are there for us. Do you know that psychologists have also discovered that? <laughs> and that, that takes me to the third point. A woman is more tall captive than the man. Our esophagus as women is different from that of men. A man speaks an average, you know, of 25,000 words a day. Maximum. That man is really, he can really talk. But a woman speaks 250,000. Maximum. Sorry, minimum. 250. That's the tight. The man, you know. So, the, the woman's mouth can run. If your husband goes to Pastor Tutu's house and returns, you meet in the evening and say, ah, Hello, darling. So, were you able to drop? He said, Yes, I dropped it. He sent his greetings. Said, Is that all? How, what did he. A woman will say, Ah, you say, ah, so how do you say, ah, darling, I've not told you. <laughs> when I drove out, I just remember that I forgot that my green, you know, so I went back and I locked the door. Then I came out again and I saw this young man. You know that man that used to go, you know, I just saw him and I just shook my head. Ah, one day, eh, you'll be saved. I just know it. So I jumped back into the car. When I jumped into the car, the car seat just refused to move. I was just moving. <laughs> I moved, I moved, I moved. Then the car, I didn't know that I forgot the key inside. It. So I pressed the thing. 
it was the shoe I was wearing. It was so too high. So I shall press it. I pressed it, you know. And the thing, it just jumped like this. I said, ah, ah, I've been driving since 19. What is all this? Anyway, so I, started, I did the, the wiper. I turned it on. It's, it's, it's clean, you know, and all that. Then I jumped the door, reversed. Hmm, thank God, I almost hit the trash bag, you know. You know I know that. When I got to pastor's house, hey, I thought nobody was. I thought nobody was at home. Because I had seen, like, you know that car I told you that you buy for me? I saw like four of it. It's, it's no more new. I think I'm changing my mind there. Eh? That's a woman telling you that she went to, pa- to the pastor's house to drop a letter. The pastor said I should greet you. When I gave him the letter, he just jumped up. He stood up. He read it. He just adjusted his glasses and read it. I didn't know he would finish reading it. He had even forgotten I was standing. He read. You see how many words I've spoken? If you read the book of Genesis in chapter 3. Genesis chapter 3. When the devil, Satan, the serpent came to Eve, the serpent spoke 14 words. Count it. King James's version. When Eve replied, she replied with 44. 44. Has the Lord said you should not eat? Oh, he said, the day we eat it, we will we'll be like this. As a woman. 44 verses 14. So once you understand that it is the way she's made up, she's made, you will be patient. Now, it's not wrong to be talkative. Some people, that's what feeds them. But talk sense. When you open your mouth, let words of wisdom come out. Praise the Lord. Let me give you one more. We are different in our sex life. A man's sex life is different from that of a woman. It's the way we're made. Now, let me explain this. A man's sex life is like this piece of paper I'm holding in my hand. Get some matches. Strike. It burns off. That's a man's sex life. A woman's sex life is different. A woman's sex life is like the charcoal. You've got to fan it and fan it and fan it. But when it catches fire, she needs help to come down. That's why a woman needs foreplay. If you want to make love to your wife at 9 p.m., you must start at 6 a.m. Preparing her. <laughs> Preparing her. While you're just waking up, stare at her in the eyes. Your eyes are just lovely. You know your plan. You are preparing for 9 p.m. <laughs> When you start early in the morning, you make her day. You know, I just woke up. I woke up about a few minutes ago and I've just been staring at you. I just love this, your African nose. Mm, you are just, ah, you're just my dream come true. Let's pray. And then when you're going out, you know, she dresses and she says, turn, turn, turn. Let me just see you turn. Wow. You keep tempting me. You this girl. You know, when you are leaving, they say, we'll, we'll see, we'll see. You know, you're already preparing her. Preparing her. So to be easy at 9 p.m to be very easy. But the woman you shouted at, what is it? Leave me alone. And then in the evening you want her to think, no, forget it. Forget it. Because a man's life can be departmentalized. This is sex. This is church. This is business. A man can finish fighting. In 15 minutes he's ready for sex. Let's go in. Don't mind him. You know, you know. And you arouse him. The man is ready. But not a woman. We carry our problems all around. A woman comes to the altar. I surrender all. Is a lie. I surrender all, all to thee, my. You know. And there she's going. Lord, I give you all these problems. Heal my son. Take care of my. Son. In Jesus' name, Amen. She carries it again. <laughs> How you sister? It is well. <laughs> Hi, your brother. It is well. You know, that's a woman for you. A woman's life, a woman's sex life is, in fact, a woman's life is like the hub of a wheel. Everything is connected. Everything. 
So if you don't treat her well, she won't respond. She'll be frigid. A man's life can be departmentalized. We're different. We are different. And every woman, can I say this to the married women? Every woman that uses sex as a weapon is very immature. It's a sign of immaturity. No, 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 don't touch me, don't touch me. Why not? Because I asked you for 2,000 euro and you didn't give me. Oh, you know, that's not right at all. A woman that is mature satisfies her husband. Because a man that is sexually satisfied will be emotionally stable. No matter how anointed a man is, is a man then of God. Man then of God. So you must satisfy your husband. Satisfy him. Don't be ill every night. Because you don't want the man to sleep with you. Why are you married? Every time the man touches you and I say, I'm sick. What's the nature of the sickness? My head, my shoulders, my knees, my toes. <laughs> everywhere is just pain in me. Everywhere. Everywhere is pain in me. 100 women are waiting to satisfy the man. So please satisfy your husband, you know, sexually. So that he can be stable emotionally. And can I say this, please? I should begin to round up now, you know. Can I say this? Every woman must learn to dress well. No man wants an old bride beside him. You must learn to dress well. I'm 51. I have jogged. I have jumped up 170 this morning before I had my bath. 170. I don't want to lose weight, but I must be smart. I'm too busy. I travel around the world preaching. I cannot afford to drag. I have four children. I've, for my eldest is 29. I told her I just became a, a grandmother. You must constantly fit your husband's palace. You must be smart and beautiful as a woman. You don't have to wear the same hair style for two months. Do you know that a research was done in the U.S. and it was discovered that the male species likes variety. A cock was set up to have sex with a particular hen. After f five rounds, it couldn't go on. The same cock was set loose and it was able to make love to 15. Hence, 15. So it was concluded that the male species likes variety. And because you are married, because you are believers, your husband cannot be jumping around. You don't want him to mess up and offend God. You as a woman must be different things to your husband at different times. Today, it is low cut. Your style, your weak style. Next, tomorrow, it is long hair. Today, it is a short dress. Next one, it is just your pants. Saturday mornings, you look for some spaghetti. You are allowed to tempt your husband. You dress well. There's no old man anywhere. There's no old man anywhere. They say, my husband is old. He's still your husband. And you are still his bride. So, you must be smart. You must be good looking. Make up your face. Look good. For 10 years, I didn't wear jewelries. I didn't make up. I didn't do nothing. The first time I put on a tiny earring, my husband said to me, you look like a woman. If you see my wedding picture, you will weep for my father. No makeup on my wedding day. No makeup, nothing. No powder, nothing. Because of religion. It's not spirituality, it is religion. It's a yoke on women. The devil just wants to frustrate us. I'm so sorry to say this. I'm a marriage counselor. My ears are full. In the counseling room, a lot of pastor's wives... I'm pains. A lot of married women are in pains. Religion is a terrible thing. I dress to please only three people. The almighty God. Number one. Let God be pleased no matter who is offended. Number two is my husband. Number three, myself. Every other person is a noise of the market. 
No, it's not the market. I wake up in the morning, I dress up, I look at the mirror and I like what I see. Then I step out. And I'm going to heaven. I've been born again 37 years. So don't be deceived by my lipstick, my red lipstick. It will be, bread, it will be redder, quote and unquote. I told my children, when I'm old and I die and you're doing funeral for me, you put me in that casket, put lipstick on me. I want to wear it to heaven. <laughs> put jewelries. Make me look good. Let me be smiling in heaven. Let me be smiling in heaven. A lot of men are frustrated today because the women look at, at 37, they look 67. Nobody wants an old bride around him. Nobody. A woman must learn to look good. You don't have to wear what they wear. You say, he's looking at me, I have three children. And you look like a panel beating Volkswagen car. <laughs> Second hand. You must look good. You must look nice. When you are above 35 and all you do is put white powder, you don't know what you're doing as a woman. Even if you don't wear jewelry, you know, if you don't wear, you know, make it up. If, Tie something, look good. You step out, your husband says, meet my wife. Meet the mother of my children. You know? So, you must be a different woman at different times. Have different wigs. Make different hairstyles. Have different dresses. Know what fits you. And be very, very presentable. My husband and I pastor over 5,000 people in Nigeria. Beautiful ladies are in our church. I cannot afford to play Ludo. <laughs> I cannot afford to play game. Some of them are not your well wishers. They want you dead. So, as you are sound spiritually, you must also be sound physically. I said to some of them, if you think this seat will be vacant, you are joking. By the time my husband is ready for you, he'll be too useless, too old. <laughs> I will have used the man finish. <laughs> you must look good as a woman. Hallelujah. Yes. You must look good. You must you must look very you can be you can be fat and smart. That's right. You can be nice. As a woman, your tummy should not be too big. Oh. Some of you you eat too late. Padedia Martina. You wake up in the morning, meet by your microwave. No. Once you are above 40, please stop eating late. By 7, shut your mouth. If you must eat late, eat fruits. And drink a lot of water. Cancer is killing too many women. Just because they live passive lives. You won't jump up. You won't exercise. You won't do anything. You sit down before the computer day in, day out. And things are settling in your body. No, it's not right. You must be smart. You know? Your, your, your neck must be the same with your <coughs> put your skirt just a double that's what it should be this is too big it should not be more than 27 inches for a woman I have got four children so you keep exercising because it has been discovered now that your waistline the health of your waistline determines the health of your heart and sometimes the devil is not the one that killed the person. They say, they say, Pan, but just say I don't even know your address. It's your mouth. You use your mouth to dig your grave. You can't eat. You must be disciplined. You can't eat everything. Everything. I was having breakfast today. But I took my glass of tomato juice. I took my cucumber. I looked at it. Oh, no, that one will add. No, that one will not. I wanted to eat it, but my health. The devil is not your well-wisher. So you must be wise to maintain your health. Same goes for the man. All these big tummies. For men, we've got to work on it too. It used, it used to be the sign of wealth. It's now a sign of... Um, I don't, so let's work on it. Husband and wife, let's talk together. Let's, let's, it, it binds us. It helps us. Praise the Lord. I think I should stop. I've got a lot to share with you, but I believe that you have been blessed this afternoon. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. I have to stop. <laughs> Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. So, let's work on our marriages. Let's work on our marriages and share the way with us. Amen. In the name of Jesus. Amen. So much to share. So much to share. But, you know, let's pray. And I thank you in the name of Jesus for our marriages.
I ask that you will help us. You will strengthen us. You grant us wisdom in the name of Jesus. Let the marriage go through any storm today. I speak peace to you. Thank you, Father. In the name of Jesus, we are praying.